Good morning. And who are you and what do you do? Good morning. My name is Jordan Thompson. I am a director for a mid-sized city in Alberta, and I'm also a private pilot. A pilot. Um, it's not too often when you get to hear about pilots, um, especially when it's for fun. What does it take to become a pilot? Yeah, it, it definitely is fun. Um, there are a few requirements. There, are, uh, there are some schools called ground school that one has to take, and then that teaches a, a student all about the theory of flight, about air law, about how an airplane works, and that is necessary to provide the, the theory in order for a student to uh, know how uh, the aviation world works. And then concurrent to that, um, the student has to fly with a flight instructor and, and take instruction and learn uh, how to fly a plane and, and all sorts of safety maneuvers in order to uh, fly a plane safely. Nice. Well, when I think about a pilot and what they do, I think about, you know, the, the cabin and all the things that happen in there, the, the dials and the, all those little circles, right? What's happening in the, uh, in the cabin there? Yeah, the, the planes are, are, are fairly simple, especially small planes, but they, they do uh, seem complex. But like most things, once you learn them, um, they are, are fairly simple concepts. Um, there's all sorts of dials in, the, in there that show the pilot um, how high they are, what their fuel levels are, how quickly they're going up or down. Um, there are radio dials that allow the pilots to talk to controllers and other pilots in the air. Um, and there are other dials such as uh, uh, voltage meters to you know show the health of the plane's uh, electrical system. And so they're just all different components showing every individual um, uh, a bit of information for for the plane that really helps the pilot uh, fly the airplane safely. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of things that are required to be measured and kind of calculated as you're flying to stay safe. I'd like to run you through a few different uh, aspects of flight, and if you wouldn't mind talking about uh, sort of the the numbers part of it, as we are in a week of inspirational math. Um, as you're thinking about planning for a flight, what goes into those calculations and and things to quantify for planning for flight? That's a really good question. Uh, the there's there, there's a whole flight planning process that you learn, um, and it's it's one of the core things that you learn when you are uh, taking uh, flight school, and so you need to know where you're going. And so you need to know where you're starting, where you're going. You use maps and you measure angles on, on what's your heading, your magnetic heading um, to go there. And then you have to uh, adjust that heading for where the magnetic north pole is at that particular time. Um, and then you have to uh, look up at the winds and adjust your, your plane direction to compensate for wind drift um in the air and so as the wind is pushing you one way you want to kind of fly against it um, or with it depending on what you want to do in order to use that wind drift um, to your advantage um, and so those are that's that's something that we're we're looking to to calculate um, we're also looking at weight the weight of the plane there's an important concept in in, in math but certainly in flight as well it's the um, moment of inertia and how far back this, the weight um, is and where the weight is placed in a plane in order for it to fly safely. Um, so that's an important factor. And then all of that plays into the, the fuel, how much fuel is needed for a certain flight. The temperature um, dictates, the temperature and pressure dictates the um, power, how much power you have available in the engine and how the plane will perform on, on any given day. And so all those are factors that come into um, consideration when we're planning a flight. Something that many people might be able to relate more closely to is fuel. And what goes into that calculation? Is it time of flight? Uh, you know, how, how hard the engine's going to have to work? Like what goes into that fuel calculation? Yeah, so the, the, the plane um, is in different modes. And so the, the, the time is, is the primary factor um, because um, if you can imagine a plane flying with a headwind, it's going to fly slower than a plane flying with a tailwind. And the fuel burn in any given time is based on um, 
is measured in hours. And so um, the aviation world uses uh, the imperial system. So gallons per hour is the is a typical um, typical unit of measure. And so if we're flying in, in a headwind and it's just going to take longer to get to our destination, we're going to burn more fuel than if we're flying for a tip with a tailwind, for example. Interesting. All right. Well, after you again have your plan and you're um, into your takeoff and you're starting with some of that flight, uh, what are the things that you're being mindful of during takeoff and during that flight period? Uh, so during takeoff, um, there is an important thing we have to consider, and that is the the, the temperature of the day, um, as well as the, the the distance of of runway that we have available, and um, what type of surface we're taking off from. It'll take longer to take off from grass, for example, than it will from from pavement, and so we want to make sure that we have enough runway available to uh, um, lift off safely. Um, once we're in the air, we are um, usually climbing to a specified altitude that we have uh, determined during the planning process. And so we, we climb at a certain rate and we want to make sure that the plane is cl climbing uh, at, a, at, a, at a certain rate of speed so that um, it's climbing efficiently, but also it's not climbing too slowly that it overheats the engine. And then once we get up to uh, what we call a cruising altitude, which is the altitude you're going to hold throughout your flight, um, we do things like we lean the engine, so we, we pull back a little bit of the fuel so that the engine operates more efficiently. And um, we're looking at the revolutions per minute, the RPM of the engine, in order to uh, determine whether we've found that right that right balance. Um, and then we, as we're flying, we're we're talking to other pilots on the frequency, and we're letting them know where we are, how far we are from known landmarks in the area. Um, and making sure that there's no conflicts and we're not flying too close to each other. And then when we get closer to our destination, we're talking either to other pilots and transitioning into a, a landing phase, or um, we're talking to the air traffic control and you're receiving instruction on, on how, to, um, how to land at that particular airport. Sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of measuring with like distances and rates and um... And constantly just being mindful of position and how far you are from things and um, and staying safe, really. I'm sure that's at the core of a lot of it. Um, so into landing, descent, and kind of final uh, aspect of flying, what are some of the final things you're looking at when you're, uh, when you're coming to the descent and landing? Um, one of the key things um, during all phases of flight, but certainly at landing, is, is what is the weather doing um, at that particular airport. And so when we get closer to an airport with that's controlled, um, we listen to something called the ADIS, and that's the automated traffic information or automated weather information system. And that um, tells us important information like where is the what direction is the wind coming from? What is the runway surface condition like? Um, what is the are there any special instructions that a pilot has to be mindful of as they're approaching that airport? And so um, knowing that we will, we always want to land um, with a headwind because that provides the plane the opportunity to fly at slowest ground speed. And so the air going over the plane is going to be at whatever it is, but the more headwind you have, the slower you can fly relative to the ground. And that provides for a, a safer landing that uh, doesn't take up as much, um, as much you know, runway length. Um, but certainly as we're, we're flying what we call a traffic pattern, which is a, kind of a predetermined pattern in the air to set ourselves up for landing, we want to make sure that we have different settings in the plane, like flaps um, that are set to slow the plane down. We bring the RPM down to a, a controlled setting to allow for a controlled stable rate of descent, um, and that's measured in, in hundreds of feet per minute. And we are making constant little adjustments to the power and the pitch of the airplane to maintain a stable airspeed and a controlled rate of descent so that when we come to land on the runway, um, it's, it's very controlled and stable and very smooth um, once, we, once we do touch down. It sounds like there's a constant uh, thought of, like, of rates and angles and position and, um, uh, and as you talked about, you know, direction many times, um, how subtle those things are that you kind of would overlook, but 
course, it makes sense that uh, that the direction of the wind would make the, that landing more impactful. So um, that is a, quite a bit of numbers and learning. And I want to thank you for your time today and hope you have a great uh, rest of the day. One last final thought. What is your favorite aspect of flying a plane? Uh, taking friends and family up to uh, to enjoy it. It's always really cool to share aviation with with people that uh, are in my life, and uh, I love to do it every time. And thanks, thanks. I enjoyed this uh, enjoyed this interview.